Mars Express made some interesting measurements of some of the basins on Mars. They looked at all these different basins and they discovered that it looks like they were filled with water in the past. Now, maybe not so surprising you think a basin is going to fill with water, but a dry crater is one that doesn't go very deep. The crater, if it's between 4,000 and 5,000 meters deep, had water in the bottom. And that was for all these locations. All of those craters see signs of water in it. Now, why does that matter? Why do we care? Well, all of these are at the same level, yet they're at very different locations on Mars. This tells us there was groundwater. There was a layer of water deep on Mars between 4,000 and 5,000 meters deep. That's the same as the light blue you're seeing there, where we think there was an ancient ocean on Mars. Mars has signs of shorelines that look like there might have been an ocean four billion years ago, and then another one three billion years ago. That's when these basins were filled with water. So, and they're at the same depth. So Mars maybe had connections. The water was all connected underground. So a story of water being much more global on Mars than we thought. Curiosity's been exploring, of course, Gale Crater. And it's seen these sort of mud cracked stones that have these whitish minerals in them. Turns out those are salts. They're being seen all over the place. And this is consistent with a system of lakes and sort of salty ponds. And the lake was undersaturated in salts. The ponds sort of surrounding it become hypersaturated. Now we think what happened is the water was there. It, it evaporated out, leaving ponds behind. And then later, they would refill. So you'd get this cycle of lakes showing up, ponds being there, them being depleted, salts being left behind, and then the water filling back in, um, which is the, this Kiskiro salt plains, you get a little water that falls on it, and it's, you can see the salt along the edges. I looked to see if there was any life in these, and my guess there probably is. It's bacterial. Yeah. There's not a lot of plants there, um, so it looks kind of Martian, and they think maybe this is what ancient Mars might have looked like, um, these salty ponds. Curiosity rover actually made some observations of the two moons of Mars, Phobos and Deimos. And there goes little Deimos passing in front of the sun. Mm -hmm. So very cool. It's actually seeing a transit, as this would be called. So fun watching it slow poke across. And then it saw this. <laughs> yeah, whoa. Um, and that's Phobos crossing the face of the sun. This would actually be an annular eclipse. Phobos is big enough in the sky that this would qualify as an annular eclipse, evidently, by the folks that make those decisions, mm. whatever governing body <clears throat> makes it. And Curiosity's been using the SAM instrument, the inlets on it, to measure the atmospheric content of Gale Crater. Recently, it's seen oxygen levels that have been above the predictive levels, as you can see there in sort of that yellow uh, ellipsed area. Also, note that there are seasonal changes. It goes up with the seasons and then comes back down. So that's interesting. That has to be explained. Now, methane um, was detected on Mars in 2004 by Mars Express. And that was interesting because methane doesn't hang around very long in the atmosphere. So something has to be producing it for it to be seen. 2011, it was uh, ground-based spectroscopy, saw some upper limits for the methane on Mars. Curiosity landed, saw none at first. And everybody thought, wow, that's really weird. What, are the ground-based observations wrong? What's going on here? Well, finally, Curiosity did detect a spike of methane in 2014. 2018, the, uh, you know, again, um, it's, it was seasonal and cyclical, and then in 2019 detected the largest spike yet of methane. And now we're seeing oxygen showing up. You can see in this lower plot, by the way, the, the oxygen is the solid circles. The uh, methane is the squares, the lighter squares, and they track fairly well together. So this isn't something that all the gases are going up and down and maybe a problem with the instrument or something. No, some of the gases are behaving just as we thought they should, and the methane and oxygen are coming and going in, in amounts they shouldn't be. Here's the plot that NASA puts out, rather complicated, for what can be causing it. Um, turns out that it can be perhaps soil. Um, it might be just reactions in the atmosphere. It could be reactions with the rocks. Aliens, maybe, for the methane, for the oxygen? No? Well, maybe. That's, that's an idea. Little microbial bugs way down in there, possibly. But let's think about the oxygen for a minute. What could be doing that? Could it just be the soil and not the exciting idea of microbes? Probably not. It would literally take millions of years to get enough oxygen out of the soil. Um, the atmosphere itself, if you break down carbon dioxide or you break down water molecules, you can produce um, O2. However, take five times more water in the atmosphere than there is, and the CO2 just breaks up too slowly. Um, rocks? Yeah, maybe. <laughs> we haven't ruled that out yet. It might be rocks for the oxygen. So could we be seeing signs with this methane and oxygen levels going up and down of 
maybe it's Martian bacteria that went underground. Maybe there could be a layer where there's still liquid water and still enough warmth that we could have colonies of microorganisms in, in Mars. I think it's an exciting possibility. Um, elsewhere on Mars, we landed a lander nested called InSight that um, is, is there to make a few different measurements. One, it's going to measure Mars quakes to study the internal structure of Mars and also uh, the, the temperature structure, so how temperature goes throughout the depths. If you listen, hear, hear a little bit of Mars wind, and this is sped up 60 times. Hear that there. Now we're just all the Martians were like, ah. ah but that was about 10, <laughs> 10 minutes of, of shaking. No, it, it wasn't very big shaking. And that was them moving the robot arm, which was kind of fun. Um, in other news about it, it has a little mole that's pounding down into the earth to measure the temperature flow. Um, but they're having trouble with this HP3 instrument. It's the heat flow probe that's supposed to hammer itself down into the Mars. They did deploy it successfully. Kind of cool to see some images stitched together into a little video. Um, this is the way it works. I'm only going to show the very start of this. The hammering is self-hammering. They pull it back and a spring releases it and it should hammer itself down into the Martian soil. And this is what it did. They had it out there, they hammered a bit, and oh no, it began hammering. It seems to have hit a rock. It was designed to go around rocks and to you know, land in a place there weren't a whole lot of rocks there. So they have this test bed where all the researchers get together, the scientists, and figure out, well, what do we do? How do we get it moving again? Well, they, Brad Pitt showed up as well. He didn't have any good ideas, but he was there visiting, <laughs> so why not show a picture of him? Um, anyway, they had the idea of taking the little scoop and putting it next to it and putting some pressure on it and seeing if they could get it to move again. And as you can see there, over a series of a handful of days, sure enough, that mole made some progress. And they thought, yay, we have it solved. And then this happened. Yeah, it just popped right back out. I don't think there's anything under there pushing it. They think maybe well, as it Well, I don't know. <laughs> the Martians, exactly, it's aliens. Um, as it hammered, maybe it rebounded a little and some of the Martian soil fell under it, filling the hole it had made. And then it hammered again, bounced up a little. So why it backed out, very, very strange. Um, they, you know, they're having to go back to the test bed. I like the way these guys are looking at each other, like, oh, I don't know. Um, <laughs> although this has nothing to do with, uh, I don't know when this was taken. I just thought it was great.